Okay, alright, so uh, I'm trying to make a video again um, to show you how to answer the friction problems. We answered most of this one in class, but um, for some of the class period, we weren't able to finish um, showing the work of all the groups. Okay, so um, let us answer the problems that we have. Okay, for number one. A crate of mass 20 kilograms is sliding across a wooden floor. The coefficient of friction between the crate and the floor is 0.3. Letter A, determine the force of friction acting on the crate. And letter B, if the crate is being pulled by a force of 90 newtons parallel to the floor, find the acceleration of the crate. Okay, so if you're going to visualize um, this one, we know that there is a crate that the mass is 20 kilograms that is sliding across the wooden floor. And um, since it's sliding across a wooden floor, we don't know which direction, but we can assume it's going to the right. The force of friction will be going to the left. Okay, we can assume like that one. Okay, we need to know this one. Okay, so there are, again, there are several ways to get the, the forces. Either use the equation Newton's second law or look at the free body diagram or look what is given and um, also use the equations that we have. And we know that for force of friction, that is equivalent to mu times f of n, okay? And this, in this case, since this is um, object that is moving, we can say that this force of friction is the kinetic. Uh, and then, our mu is mu sub k, which is the mu of the kinetic. All right, so just plug in the values. So our FF, maybe I can just put it as k. Our mu is 0.3, based on the given right here. This is our mu. And then our F of n, our, our F of n is um, depending on the mass in this in this case, or our weight, so our Fn is equivalent to mg. Okay, since there's only one force going up and one force going down, so our Fn is equivalent to our Fg. So if we calculate this one first, our m is 20 kilograms, and um, this is 9.8 meters per second squared. If we plug in this two right here, that is 20 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, our answer should be equivalent to 58.8 newtons. So that is our force of friction. Okay, so next, letter B. If the crate is pulling pulled by a force of 90, so we know that there is a force that is pulling it. And then they said that it is equivalent to force of pull is equivalent to 90 newtons parallel to the floor. Find the acceleration of the crate. All right, so we know based on Newton's second law, acceleration is equivalent to net force over the mass. If you're going to look at the our free body diagram, we know that our FG is um, let me just calculate that one twenty times nine point eight. That is um, one hundred ninety six newtons, and our FN is one hundred ninety six newtons. We know that it is exactly the same in opposite direction, so we know that our net force on the y is zero already, but when we look at our, in the x-axis, our FF is 58.8 newtons, or, and our force of push pull is um, 90 newtons. So now we know that our net force is equivalent to 90 newtons minus 58.8 newtons, and then our mass is equivalent to 20 kilograms. If we calculate this two, this is equivalent to 1.56 meters per second squared. Okay, so that is our acceleration. All right, next, second one. 
a crate of mass of 100 kg rests on the floor. So those are the keywords, rest, so it means it's not, it's not moving on the floor. And the coefficient of static friction is 0.4. If the force of 250 parallel to the floor is applied to the crate, what is the magnitude of the force of the static friction of the crate? On the crate. Okay, so let us draw our free body diagram again to visualize what is going on. So we have a crate being, um, there's a force of 250 newtons applied to the crate. So let's say it's a force of push that is going to this direction, 250 newtons. And since it's on the floor, there will be a normal force, normal force going up. And then our weight is always going down. And on the floor, there is a friction of FF. So the question is, what is the magnitude of the force of friction of static force of static friction? So we need this one as FF static because it's not moving. All right. So let us just apply our equation also static so we're going to move times fn okay be careful when you're every time that you are um, calculating this one the actual force of friction static that you are calculating is the maximum force of friction so that is the maximum force that the friction can can hold without uh, moving the, the crate so let us just do the same thing. Let us apply, you know, that Fn is equivalent to Fg. So it means our Fn is equivalent to Mg also because they are the same. So let us just substitute it. Fn is equal to Mg. Mu sub S is 0.4. And then our mass is 100 kilograms. And then the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. And if we calculate all of this, multiply, then our answer will be 392 newtons. This is the maximum um, force of friction. Um, the question is, what is the magnitude of the force of the static friction on the crate? This is the maximum. But if you see this one, if our, for, based from our free body diagram and based from the given, um, our force of push is 250 newtons. And we know that if this is pushing 250 and if it's not moving, then this one should be equivalent to 250 also. Because it's not moving. Okay, so we can say that since applied force is equivalent to 250 newtons, then the static is also equivalent to 250 newtons. It means your crate will not slide. So until 392 newtons of push, um, your crate will not slide. All right, next. Number three, a 20 newton block is being pushed across a horizontal table by, a, a, by, a, by an 18 newton force. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the table is 0.4, so coefficient of kinetic friction, is 0.4. Find the acceleration. This is what you need to find of the block. So 20 newton block being pushed on the horizontal force by 18 newtons. Okay. Again, draw the few body diagram so that we can visualize what is happening. So there is force applied of 18 newtons. And then they said that the block is 20 newtons, so it means your weight, don't need to calculate the weight already, is 20 newtons. And then you will have a normal force. And since it's not going up or going down, it means your normal force and weight is the same. So this is 20 newtons as well. And then um, you're going to have a, a force of friction that is kinetic because it is 
it, it's moving okay what we need to find is the acceleration okay again brace from Newton's second law acceleration is equivalent to the net force divided by the mass so what is our net force now if you look at your free body diagram this this is the same as this one and they are opposite direction so we don't have any force on the y-axis but if you look at this one you have 18 newtons here and then you have ff um, kinetic friction right here um, so we need to calculate first the kinetic friction so that we'll know if we have a net force okay so let's do the calculations here so our ff k is equivalent to mu k times fn and we know that our fn is equivalent to um, 20 newtons so actually I should have put the value there already so mu k is 0.4 that is your coefficient it's right here and our fn is 20 newtons our force of friction kinetic force of friction is equivalent to um, uh, our force of friction kinetic is equivalent to 8 newtons okay so now net force we have 8 going to the left 18 newtons going to the right so just subtract because they are opposite directions okay then our net force will be equivalent to 10 newtons all right and then now we now have the net force but do we have the mass given we do not have the mass given usually they're giving you the mass but this time they didn't give you the mass they gave you the weight um, but we can easily calculate the mass from the weight we know that fg is equivalent to mg right so um, if our fg is equivalent to 20 newtons and then our mass is unknown acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared then our mass is equivalent to just divide both sides by 9.8 our mass is equivalent to 20 newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squared then our mass is equivalent to 2.04 kilograms okay and then now we're ready to input everything all right, so our net force is 10 and our mass is 2 point right here 2.04 kilograms and just divide it to our answer should be equivalent to 4.90 meters per second squared okay that is our final answer okay next one number four Cheryl 65 kilogram is water skiing behind her her father's boat she pulled at a constant speed by a rope with a tension of 164 newtons at an angle of 10 meters below the horizontal calculate everything you need to find the coefficient of friction so we need coefficient of friction we need the mu and then we know that the mass of Cheryl is 65 kilograms and she pulled at a constant speed by a rope with a tension of 164 newtons at an angle de 10 degrees below um, the horizontal so if you're going to draw the free body diagram of this one so um, this is like um, this is the, the boat and then we can say that there is she is being pulled at a constant speed by a rope of um, 164 newtons so let's say this is the 164 newtons this is your tension and then that is um, 10 degrees below the horizontal okay well it should be a different one
Okay, so let us continue. Um, number four again. Cheryl is um, 65 kilograms, is water skiing behind her father's boat. She is pulled at a constant speed by a rope with a tension of 164 newtons at an angle of 10 degrees below the horizontal. Calculate everything you need to find the coefficient of friction. Okay, so the coefficient of friction is mu, and in this case, we are calculating the mu k. And then it's being pulled with a tension of 164 newtons at 10 degrees below the horizontal and Cheryl mass is 65 kilograms. Okay, so if you're going to be drawing the free body diagram here, Cheryl is this box and then being pulled by the tension of 164 newtons that is 10 degrees below the horizontal this is the horizontal below it is 10 degrees okay and then we know also that it's in the water there will there will be a friction if she's being pulled this direction then the force of friction will be the other direction force of friction kinetic and then um Cheryl has a weight which is equivalent to mg and then um, there is a normal force that is coming from, I mean, normal push of the water, okay? And then if you look at this free body diagram, we see that this one is not a horizontal or vertical line, and it is at an angle. So if we recall our vectors, we know that this can be separated into two components, the horizontal and the vertical component. So we're going to have x component, and the y component all right and if you're going to use our trigonometry if this is your hypotenuse this is your angle you want to get this one this is equivalent to 164 cosine theta and then this one will be equivalent to 164 sine theta okay i will not discuss the trigonometry you should know it by now but if not, uh, see me um, after school. Okay, I will redraw again this one so that everything is um, a little bit more clear. So we have Fn going up and then Fg going down. And then I will be, well actually, let me just make it a box. There is Ff going to this direction then I will draw the components because this one is easier to deal when everything is horizontal and vertical well, let's just put this this is 10 because we know the angle already and then there is this one 164 sine of 10 okay so I just um, divided this one into the two components all right what we need is mu when we are calculating for the mu we know the only equation that has a mu is this equation all right so to calculate the mu if we rearrange this equation that is ff divided by fn okay if you look at the free body diagram right here we can see that uh, for the FF, our FF is equivalent to this guy because it's moving at a constant speed, right? So it means your FF is equivalent to 164 cosine 10. And that 164 cosine 10 is equivalent to... One second. Make sure you're... Your degree, you are in degree mode, so this is 161.51 newtons. So you have the FF now. How about the FN? All right, 
look at your free body diagram again your fn is going up there are two two um, vectors going down so it means this fn will be the sum of these two which is fg plus 164 sine of 10 and you know that fg is equivalent to mg actually i should but just writing it as mg all the time um, so we have mass of 65 kilograms our fg times 9.8 meters per second squared okay plus uh, 164 sine of 10 if you calculate this one your fn is equivalent to around 600 13.48 newtons okay so you have everything just plug in in here your ff is 161.51 newtons and your ff is 613.48 i mean fn 613.48 newtons and then your mu is equivalent to 0.26 okay and it's um it's relatively correct because you know that uh, water is slippery and it's somewhat close to zero your mu is low so it means it is um, slippery the surface is slippery okay next number five a block of mass M is pulled across a rough horizontal surface with a force of um, with a rope with a ten with a rope with a tension of T at an angle of um, theta to the horizontal as seen in the diagram at the right okay the diagram I do not have my diagram right here but you have the diagram in your uh, worksheet um, the coefficient of friction between the block and the surface is mu and then um, what we need to calculate is what is the normal force of the block okay so if you're gonna be looking at the diagram actually if you do have a diagram you have this one with an M and then there is a tension of pull that is at an angle of theta okay what we need is the Fn if you look at this one again um, completing the free body diagram we know that if there is a mass there is Fg for your weight and then there is a normal force because it is at a surface and then there is a friction that is going to the other direction <coughs> okay so with this one if you look at this one what will be our Fn okay again we do have this tension at an angle we know that this will be separated into the y component and the x component and using the trigonometry the y component will have t um, sine theta and the x component will be t cosine theta okay if I'm going to redraw my free body diagram in terms of just horizontal and vertical components have mg here we have f in there we have the force of friction here and the one that's being separated we have a tension sine theta and then right here we do have tension cosine theta okay so look at your free body diagram for letter A what is Fn if you look at this one Fn is going up with this one we have two components going up so your Fn plus your T sine theta is should be it should be equivalent to mg because um, they are not um, accelerating up or down okay so if you're calculating for Fn just do your algebra that will be mg minus T sine theta okay that is your Fn letter B what is the force of friction of the block so if you look at this one force of friction is in the horizontal direction and there is only uh, one horizontal um, force going to the right so it means 
your FF. Oh wait, hold on one second. Um, before that one, we can use the equation first because we actually we don't know they didn't really say if it's moving at a constant velocity so we don't know if this one is equivalent to this one but we know our equation that it is f equals to mu times fn and that will be mu and then your fn is mg minus t sine theta then that is your ff all right for letter C, if the block is moving at a constant velocity, so this is the one that I was like um, saying earlier, what is another answer for the force of friction on the block? Okay, so since, like I'll repeat again, since we only have one vector going to the left and one vector going to the right, we can say that our force of friction is equivalent to the x component of the tension, which is C cosine theta. Next, number six, a horizontal force of 95 newtons is applied to a 60 kilogram crate on a rough level surface if the crate accelerates at 1.2 meters per second squared. What is the magnitude of the force of kinetic friction acting on the crate? Okay, draw again the diagram to visualize what's going on. We know that there is a force applied, horizontal force applied, let's assume it's going to the right. That is 95 newtons, and we know that it's accelerating going to the right. And there is a force of friction that is kinetic that is going on the opposite direction. Okay, we need to know what this is. Okay, so from here, you're also given your acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. All right. Um, and then you have the mass of 60 kilograms. Um, we need to get the FF K. All right, based from our equation, we know that um, we want to get our FF K. So how are we going to do that one? Using your Newton's second law, A is equivalent to net force over m and then if you look at this one for our net force we know that there are two forces acting on it but going up and going down is just canceling out so we're just dealing with uh, x components i mean x um x forces and so we know that um it is equivalent to um your force horizontal which is this one minus your FFK divided by M, okay? And we want to solve for this one, All right? So let me just rewrite it again. F horizontal, FFK divided by M you want to solve for that one during your algebra multiply both sides by m first so this will cancel so you have ma f horizontal minus f f k and if you want this one we can say that our f f k is equivalent to f horizontal minus ma and you know everything already your force horizontal is 95 newtons your mass is 60 kilograms and the acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared okay all right so what is the answer for this one this should be equivalent to 23 newtons Okay, that's it.